All right, welcome back. Time now for news from the left. First up, Washington Commanders, used to be the Redskins. Defensive coordinator Jack Del Rio found himself in trouble recently for simply questioning why the media's focus is solely on January 6th, and yet nobody cared about 2020 and the summer of looting and rioting and mass destruction and all that. You probably heard the comment. He was fined $100,000 for thinking for himself and exercising free speech. Welcome to America. And then ESPN's Stephen a smith went after del rio saying he just doesn't understand the 2020 riots because he's not black take a listen he's white he's not black and there's an awful lot of white people that cannot in any way identify with the plight that african americans feel from a black man who's worth more money than 99.99 percent of white people in this country a person whose existence dispels the entire narrative of systemic racism he's trying to push. Quite a funny comment there. Stephen A. Smith standing up and vindicating the rioters of 2020, who, by the way, did most of their reparation rioting in black neighborhoods, destroying the neighborhoods that they claim they want to protect. Next up, race-baiting activist Ibram X. Kendi, known for his books How to Be an Anti-Racist and Anti-Racist Baby, has graced us with another book called how to raise an anti-racist. Boy, this guy writes a lot of crappy books. Today, Kendi went on MSNBC's Morning Joe to promote the new book, talk about why he wrote it, and then he said this. Kids are actually the most vulnerable to racism. By three years old, our kids have an adult-like concept of race. By three years old, our kids are attaching uh, qualities like smartness and honesty and cleanliness to, to skin color. None of this is real, by the way. It's all part of a plan, because if you can convince people that little kids are already racist, then they're justified to begin the Marxist indoctrination of these kids in preschool, which, again, is what this is all about. It's all just designed to eviscerate a free country to eviscerate capitalism and introduce the ideologies that they want. That's the whole point. And if you can get them at three years old, you got them for life. Next up, after Elon Musk told his Twitter followers he voted for Myra Flores, that uh, young woman that won that seat uh, in South Texas, marking the first time he's ever voted Republican, people became curious uh, who he's going to vote for in 2024. One user asking Musk, who are you leaning toward? Musk casually replies, Ron DeSantis. Former ESPN host Jamel Hill, who has more opinions than brain cells, popped up with arguably one of the dumbest takes of all time. Yet another example of people throwing that genius label around way too casually. Now, you can hate Elon Musk's politics if you want, but denying Elon Musk is a genius just proves that you are a political hack. Musk started the most innovative electric car company in history, employs thousands of people. His other company, as if one company wasn't enough, SpaceX, made history after successfully completing a vertical takeoff and landing of the same rocket so he can land rockets coming in from outer space standing up. His other company, Starlink, as if two wasn't enough, satellite internet company that's keeping Ukraine online during a war. But he doesn't write radically anti-white ideology for the Atlantic, so I guess in Jamel Hill's eyes, he's not a genius. Next up, Mediate reporting CNN's new boss, Chris Licht, wants staff to stop calling Trump's election claims the big lie. Ooh, according to a source, a little music there for you, Licht argued that using the big lie makes the mistake of adopting branding used by the Democrat Party, thereby weakening the objectivity of the network. That is something else. So what is CNN's Brian Stelter going to talk about all weekend is the big question. If you can't talk about the big lie while also ignoring all the shady things that happened in 2020, what exactly is Stelty going to chat about on his Sunday show, which uh, is seeing the ratings plummet further and further and further? You wonder when they're going to make all these big changes because they talked about it a lot, right? They said, oh, you know, we don't want all this partisanship, but all the same people work there. So it's, you know, you're like, all right, something's got to give here, right? Something's got to change. I haven't seen any mass exodus. They still got the same people on TV. Makes you wonder. And finally, last night, left work, I got a chance finally to see a movie I've been talking about for like two years, the new Top Gun, Top Gun Maverick. I finally saw it. I have to tell you it is by far the best film of the year. And the reason why? Because it had no agenda. 
It was just a great movie designed for a broad audience to enjoy. It was very pro-American. It was just awesome. Everybody killed it. It was an amazing film. Tom Cruise continues to be one of the best actors in Hollywood, in my opinion. Sadly, though, in just two years, the reality is a movie like this is going to be snubbed for Best Picture because it doesn't pander to the new LGBTQ requirements from the Academy. It in no way pandered to any left-wing ideology. It did none of that, which is ironically why the entire freaking country loves this movie and why everybody is going to see it, because it has no agenda. Hollywood thinks that they're so clever that they can slip their BS into all of these movies and TV shows. They think you're really dumb. And the ir irony is, is that you're actually smarter than they are because you understand something that they don't. You understand what people actually want to see. And they're bleeding out because of their ideology. Top Gun's crushing it.